Hey, this is Lester Martin from Starburst Academy, and I want to make a quick video about enabling data products and then uh, validating they work just fine. This, uh, if you follow the docs, this is obviously going to piggyback, piggyback on top of the fact that we just, uh, or we need to have the cache services enabled because we want to use materialized views in our data products. So if you watch those videos with me, you'll see that, hey, we did a number of those features just a bit ago. Uh, what we'll do here now is actually I have my uh, feed, my comments, my properties just really sitting here waiting for me. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck, uncomment those. And they pretty much just say, let's enable data products and uh, point it to the coordinator and so on. And ultimately pick in a um, service account name. So data products service. So easy change there for us. It's really all I need since I have all the other prereqs in place. And then from there, I need to do um, an upgrade to my cluster. So I'll kick that off and uh, pause the recording and then pull that up uh, when it is finished here in just a minute. All right, our cluster came up just fine. Uh, there's our two workers. Uh, I'm logged back in as a uh, sysadmin and I'm going to have to set up some um, permissions, some roles and whatnot to handle this. So much like I did with a caching service in a prior set of videos, I'll create a new role. I'm gonna call this role data products service, give it a little description, maybe um, something. Yep, there we go. A little basic <laughs> description of that. Uh, from there, what we can do is go ahead and start adding some privileges. So let's see, add a privilege. Um, one thing we wanna be able to do is for the, the various users that are gonna use data products, we want to allow impersonation across the board. That'll help this service do its job. From there, um, that's probably enough to get started here. Back in that new role we just created, let's also assign the user, um, the user, the user, the user, I think we called it uh, data products service. Where was that? that? That was in those properties that we just looked at. Uh, just a few minutes ago data products service all right assign that and we might as well create another role we'll call this role the data products admin so these are going to be generally speaking uh, admins i guess is we all put that and as my description says these are folks that want to allow to administer data products as a whole so we'll add that role and might as well go ahead and add some privileges to that role. I mean, it sounds pretty logical. Uh, data products, details. Yep, yep, yep. Add some privileges. Um, maybe the first privilege is let's let the data products admins, you know, look at all these various domains and uh, give them access to do just about everything. So we turn that on. And we'll add another privilege now. Um, this one, we just want them to add a new privilege. Yes, tables. Let's just say uh, those data products are going to be able to basically select uh, from anywhere. So let's allow that to occur. Select, push this down. This will work with our materialized views there. That are going to be the underlying pin. And we might as well add another product, another feature. Now, this one is actually just saying um, let's we're pointing it to hive and then because what's going to happen when we create these data products and domains and whatnot they're going to create a schema and we're going to choose at that time to create those to go into our hive connector our hive catalog um, and we don't know what those schemas are called yet we just want to make sure that uh, the, the system here data products admins will be able to do uh, pretty much everything because they're gonna create the schema, create the tables, all that kind of good stuff, create the materialized views. And I think that will get us to those permissions that we need. And we might as well add at least one user to our data products admins. And I'll just use myself, uh, the user I am right now, that's the Starburst service, just to keep it kind of simple. And I think, well, I guess maybe there's one more uh, thing we need to do, maybe with the caching service. So we want to make sure 
that the uh, caching service also uh, we might have this permission already so add privileges to the to that same hive catalog looking at all those schemas so we really just want to make sure that the caching service can read from these newly created data products uh, and whatnot that we might have stored in these new schemas that have yet to be created so let's see yeah already had that permission anyway well that's fine let's add another permission and i'm not sure sure if it'll be there or not but let's find out caching service um yeah i think this permission will be here but i'll try it anyway we um specifically maybe my first example is going to use the tpch data set here uh, maybe we'll just pick the scale factor one and just say hey all the tables in there why don't we allow it to um to do a select against these so this is just making sure the data products themselves have access to go get things. Okay, that's fair enough. Or the data products admins, the person that create that can select those in the first place. So I'll save that privilege. Uh, that's a new one that's good. And we'll just say that is enough permissions for now. All right, so that's the basic setup. Again, just some permissions and uh, roles and permissions that we just created, enabling data products, picking the service account. And what we want to do now is, um, I'll make a new video, is test this out. Build some data domains, uh, data products, and data sets. We'll do that next. Hi, this is Lester Martin with Starburst Academy. And this is our second video in the data products uh, recordings I'm making. Just a bit ago, we set up, we did the Helm upgrade, we made the property changes needed for data products. We created some roles and gave them appropriate um, access. And we verified that all went well by the system coming up. And now that we're in here and we're looking at the Starburst web UI, really what we should notice on the left-hand side is some new navigation elements, primarily data products and domain management. So we'll start on uh, uh, domain management. We'll go to domains. And we have no domain, domains. This is part of data products. We'll create a new one. We'll build some examples here. So we'll call this the sales domain. Now the sales domain, you know, we'll give it a little description here. And the description, you know, metrics over orders, that kind of good stuff. Pretty, pretty normal stuff. Now when we create a domain, we actually need to know uh, where we're going to put that information. We need an S3 bucket. So I'm using this S3 bucket right here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is grab that uh, URL to the clipboard. Uh, we'll just, I guess we'll just copy it uh, in many ways there. Let's do this. Da, 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 da. Here, actually, I have a little snippet I can use. And then I'll lay the S3 bucket specific one I'm gonna use down inside of there. So there's my luster. There we go, copy. I'll place that here. And we'll go look back in just a minute to see if that made it. There we go. All right, so whoops. No, it didn't. It didn't paste. <laughs> what happened there? Okay. Let's see if I can grab it one more time. I think it's just called um, Lester Train One Boot Camp November 2023. I think that's it. Boot Camp November. Yep. All right, so we'll save that. We'll create a domain. Now, we can go back uh, into S3, and if we refresh this right here, right now, we actually, you know, we don't really see anything happen yet. And that's okay. We just created a situation where eventually we'll get some folders uh, that are created here. Now, what should we do next? Well, back in the UI, it's probably time to go ahead and create a data product. We have a domain. So we need a domain to put a data product in. That's kind of that hierarchy there. So I've created a data product. And we'll define something here. Order information. Now, we'll find out in a minute data products have data sets. So just kind of think of that stepping down. Data products in Starburst Enterprise have to work, uh, have to use a catalog to store themselves in a catalog. And that catalog is primarily of the type Hive. So I called mine Hive, with my catalog name, but it's a connector of type Hive as well. It's going to decide to build a 
uh, data uh, schema actually under the covers using the same name or, you know, a, uh, a mix, a lowercase, un underscore, separated, all that kind of good stuff. So you see order information is something I can't edit. And then a domain, this is where we pick that logical domain we just declared a bit ago. So a quick summary, just nothing more than, you know, a data product. Uh, um, well, I got a better one, I guess. Let's do that. Let's copy this one. I think, it, I think it's just going to say info about orders. Perfect. Yeah, nothing too complicated. All right, so let's save uh, that and move on a little bit. From here, we're actually, as I suggested, you know, d data products live within the context of a, of a domain. But the data product themselves are equating to a schema. So the data sets are going to be actually something like you would imagine as a table itself. We'll actually implement them as either views or materialized views. So we'll call this one open high priority, priority orders. And we'll give it a little description, something like this. I'll let you read that description while I grab the query that I'm going to use. And there's my query. Couple joins across TPC orders and customers. As it kind of says, looking for high priority open orders. That's what the where clauses are all about. All right, so that's set set up, and then we have to decide if we're going to use a view or a materialized view. Again, this is SEP's implementation. Would have to be a view or a materialized view. We'll stick with a view to keep it pretty uh, straightforward. And I'll go ahead and just toggle this, show columns and add column details. Here's your chance to come add some descriptions. It might help your your tooling, your uh, your um, BI type tooling that are maybe leveraging this, I'll just leave them all uh, all blank here and save and continue. I'll leave them yeah, empty there. And we do need to add an owner here. This is one of those requirements that'll make us put in there. And this will be something that folks can see. And then from there, maybe reach out and get a contact with this. Okay. And we might as well add some tags these will help us later in things like searching and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to say hi, sure, hi, and priority. Um, actually, I want one called high priority. So let's try that. High priority, priority. Okay, there's the tag I was looking for. And then maybe another tag will use the word open, uh, the phrase open orders. So higher priority, open order uh, tags are added to that. And let's just see if for now we can move on. There's additional things we could do with documentation, links, all that good stuff. There's stuff later that you can also do from a uh, more of a social perspective of, a, of liking and rate, ranking and that kind of good stuff. We'll keep it simple and straightforward to validate that everything's working. Lastly, we want to publish this. So we have it all set up. Let's share this with someone. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to publish? Yes, I sure do. Let's publish it. And hopefully that all works. It sure did. And this data product called order information has a single data set. It just happens to be called open high priority orders. Now let's take a look back in S3 and reload a little bit. And there we go. There's our data products folder we created. There's our sales and hive and there's the order information. But it shows that there's nothing here. And that's okay. I just want to make a point what's really happening. This is a view that actually lives in uh, Hive uh, Open Orders is the, uh, the, uh, the, the catalog and, and schema name since it really is implemented that way. But it's gonna mask that for us and show us a little differently in the GUI here for us, and that's okay. All right, so we have that element in there. We can verify uh, that we can see it. Just for fun, we'll go back to the query editor. And as I suggested, it's actually really uh, offered up right here under order information. There we go. That was the, the data products uh, schema that got created for us under the covers. So if people really, really want to go directly and access, they can run this, uh, this view. This is what they'll be referencing here. So here, might as well run it while we're here. There it's at the bottom, select 10 or select 100, whatever it said. And we're off and run. There we go, select 10. That's our data product. Now I'm going to go back to the existing data product that we created and just really make sure, well, um, the order information data product. And I want to add uh, an additional uh, data set to that. How might I do that? Well, 
Easiest is hit this dot dot dot, the ellipsis, say uh, edit. Uh, inside of edit, we can kind of scroll down. We're trying to get past this front page. All that looks good. And we want to create a data set. Here we go, add another data set is what we're looking for. Now this data set, uh, we'll call it uh, total, let's see here, total price market segment order status and a little bit of a description here like before I let you take a quick uh, look at it while I grab the query that we're going to use and the query is going to be uh, for us we don't have to get too uh, worried about the business domain we just want to say yep there's a query here that we're going to leverage now from here we can do the same stuff we did before we could look at the show and column stuff but I'm going to skip that oh I want to I want to use uh, a materialized view this time and if you participated in the recordings around cash service you'll remember that there are concepts like how often should this uh, uh, materialized view be re, uh, re excuse me uh, be refreshed yes <laughs> so we're going to say hey let's get it refreshed automatically by the cash service every 60 minutes all right and then from there um, probably I think we can save and review unless we forgot something uh, we haven't we've saved those we have this concept of a staging it's not quite uh, it's pending so we can continue to work on it but ultimately we'll go ahead and publish that thing out we're ready to publish it yes we are and we should see yep two things I didn't point again a lot of the other features here there's cool little things like uh, previews and that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, we'll save that for uh, a more user-focused data products perspective. The, the intention of this video is just to validate all is working. So I wanted to show a data product of view and materialized view type. I'll just peek over one more time back in S3 to see what we have. We have sales, hive, order information, and we actually did get created a folder this time for that particular activity. Um, now this time, just like before, it's still empty. It's empty because it's actually stored as a materialized view. And the materialized view, well, we set up in a prior session that they those materialized views live in this thing called the views cache store. So we look under here. So there we go. There it is. Total price, market segment, so on, so on, so on. Now, to run this thing, um, what people will find is ultimately something like this. Um, sorry, order information, and there's the new one, total market uh, price. Again, what it looks like here is I created a schema with a view and a materialized view, but what really happened, that is true, but really happened is we created uh, a data product called order information that folks can use, again, much more of our gravity, our searching, our social aspects to find out all this kind of good stuff and then from here even get connection details learn about and I don't want to necessarily um, uh, take you there and all that good stuff that's a longer conversation worthy um, but from here we can definitely get rooted straight to those activities so what we did is verified that the changes we made earlier in our helm upgrade uh, actually do allow us to create a data product domain a uh, uh, data product, and then data sets within uh, that data product. All right, thank you so much.